Research involving high-risk pathogens is essential for the development of new detection methods and therapies for diseases such as Q fever and emerging pathogens such as MERS corona and influenza viruses. We work with this high-risk material as safely as possible in order to protect both ourselves and the environment. Biosafety. To supplement biosafety, biosecurity can prevent pathogens falling into the wrong hands. Even just the threat of a pathogen can have a disrupting effect on society. But knowledge about pathogens can also be used to damage society. By applying biosecurity measures, we can reduce the risk of spread of both dangerous pathogens and confidential information. These measures consist of eight areas of focus, the eight pillars of good practice, which are all relevant to good policy on biosecurity. Only authorized persons have access to high-risk pathogens. However, physical barriers may become breached unintentionally this is why the culture within an organization and the behavior of its employees is so important. And, for example, why strangers should not be let in or given a lift. Laboratory safety also requires careful selection of new personnel. High-risk laboratories can supplement their regular security measures through extra screening of employees by requiring a certificate of conduct, for example. In 2001, five people died after receiving a letter containing anthrax spores. These may have come from a laboratory where an employee was working on his own at night. Colleagues should be encouraged to watch out for deviant behaviour and to report it. External personnel may also come into close contact with high-risk pathogens and confidential information, in which case appropriate measures should be taken. It is essential that high-risk material is properly registered and that materials are safely stored. The transport of high-risk pathogens by third parties is governed by legislation that must be complied with. Access to open Wi-Fi networks allows us to communicate digitally almost everywhere, but anyone who uses an unsecured network, exchanges confidential information in public, or loses such information, runs the risk of their computer being hacked and information falling into the wrong hands. It is therefore essential that management includes the responsibility for biosecurity in an organization's infrastructure so that sufficient time and resources are available to guarantee safety. The Code of Conduct on Biosecurity is a good starting point in this respect. Agreements with the emergency services and the security regions are important for a rapid response to emergencies involving dangerous pathogens in order to limit their spread as much as possible. If biosecurity is regularly discussed in all layers of an organization, it helps to detect any failings that are not immediately obvious in daily practice. It is important that we thoroughly protect high-risk pathogens and what we know about them. By focusing on all eight pillars of good practice, biosecurity can be implemented in your organization. The Biosecurity Office can provide you with information and support for implementation of appropriate biosecurity measures.